Hey, welcome to the laboratory, everybody. I am Rob, Dr. Appel, Stitchology from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to Making It Fun, everybody. Recently, I was asked a super important question, and it sounded something like this. Hey, Rob, what is Michael Miller Fabrics doing to educate all of the quilters out there about the difference between the new digital printing and the traditional wet printing? Well, that answer starts right now. Welcome to the sewing science class, everybody. We are going to have a super good time experimenting today. And really, that question that was asked was super important to me because I don't know a ton about the new process of digital printing. And I have heard several folks be concerned about there about what happens, especially when you're finishing the work that has been digitally printed. Maybe I need to back up a second and talk a little bit about the differences. And I'll take a second, and like I said, I don't know a ton, but traditional quilting fabric, let's just call it traditional quilting fabric, was done on wet printing style. So these wheels that go through and print one color at a time as the fabric runs through underneath and uh, it's like a screen printing format and the ink is pushed through. It's a little more saturated kind of thing. Where digital printing is really just like an inkjet printer, like would be connected to your computer uh, at home, but just very, very large scale that they can print the fabric right on. And of course, there's differences in qualities of the goods that you use and the inks that you use. And really for us at Michael Miller Fabrics, what we're really finding out, it's really about the different mills or the factories that we use specifically. So today's test is for not only for all of you, but for us as well. We want to see what happens when we quilt with black thread in the background or these black background fabrics. I want to see if I'm getting any snags or any kind of show through with a digital print. The background fabric is often a little bit lighter in color. And so our concern is, is are we going to see needle strikes if you have to cut the thread and fill back in like what would happen with machine quilting. So I've taken these samples. I have a wet print sample here. This is traditional wet print. This is in the wild from Michael Miller. On the back was another really fun floral that we wet printed called Provincial. I just asked for a couple of quick samples so that I could throw them over on the long arm and do some terrible machine quilting as fast as I could go with a very large and very dull needle because those are also parts of the variables that cause problems within this. Okay, so the other thing we have here is we have our fantastic Woodland Musicians fabric. This is a digital print, and the advantage really of digital printing is we can print like a photograph, any color, millions and millions of colors. We're not limited to just those few wheels that hold the dyes in traditional printing. And so you can get more gradient style printing. You can get a lot more shading going on, and that's really fun. So this one is from one of our licensed designers, Aggie Woodland Musicians, and uh, the back is one of the coordinates. So both the front and back of this are digitally printed. Both the front and back of this were wet printed, and I have machine quilted them. All right, let's get a little closer look at both of these samples now that the machine machine quilting is done. <laughs> And it's done very poorly, and that's part of our test, right? So let's start here with our wet print. And I can see as I was running the machine over the fabrics, every now and again, I would catch a little snag or a little something. They're going to be real hard to see, and I do have little bits of like white bobbin thread showing up. That's tension issue that's not related to our print that we're discussing today, the difference between wet and digital printing. Um, let me see, I've I, I, I seen one or two happen. So the truth is, you see it happen in wet and digital printing. Not finding a great example. Maybe I should have marked it as it was going on. You can see it along the edge if you look real closely. This is our big concern. This is where the whole conversation started, is what happens if you snag a thread with a dull needle, especially a large needle like we use on our long arms or our big machines for machine quilting, uh, with dark fabric. So I've used this dark fabric and this dark thread and I've got these little teeny snags here and you can see this. This one was the wet printed or the traditional printed for those long time quilters. This is the digital printed sample and same thing was happening on the digital sample. Um, they both actually stitched up fantastically. I did see a little bit more of it happening and that was the big concern out in the field. Here's one, golly, I mean, I'm sure you can't see it. I've got to be down here with like a magnifying glass to look for it. But again, that was what we were looking for in that portion of the test. 
What I want to do now is real quick, I'm just going to trim these quilts down so that I can throw them in the wash. I'm not going to bind them. I'm not going to take that kind of time, but I am going to take a moment and safely using my cutter and my ruler, trim these edges so I can at least do a nice little stitch line along the edge so I don't end up with a giant mess in my washing machine. This will be a fun test for me. I've never actually even washed a quilt. And while these are in the wash, we're gonna talk about the other thing that we're concerned about in digital printing. I'll be right back. Laundry machine. We certainly are going to have some time to burn while that's in the washer and dryer. So I do want to talk a little bit more about some of the pros and cons of digital versus wet printing. Now, I mentioned I've got my beautiful guitar quilt over here on the wall. And if you followed my career before, this is an applique project. There's actually a pattern. Uh, link is down below in the description. If you want to purchase it from my website, you can. But we're not talking about that today. Bazillions of little applique pieces, all custom curated, all custom designed, and fantastic. I absolutely love, this is one of my favorite quilts I've ever designed. As a matter of fact, this guitar right here that I made myself out of a wooden box kit is this guitar right here, as a matter of fact. And they used to hang right along where the design wall was. I took the rack down to put up the design wall, so these guitars basically hung right here. And I love that. It was very very, very special. And one day I got a terrible email and I was very, very frustrated by it. Somebody let me know that there was a company and now I have found there are several companies out there that are knocking off, stealing artwork and digitally printed it and selling it as finished goods. I couldn't believe it myself. So I actually invested in my own knockoff and bought this for, I shouldn't even say it, but $50 online. You can get a bunch of different sizes made and it's an absolute piece of However, there's pros and cons to digital printing. So you can take just about any image and people are winning awards in the quilting industry by printing beautiful imagery and then machine quilting to embellish all of that. Now, the reason I'm frustrated about this project is one, these folks did not have my permission to use my image. I looked at it deeper, it's not even my image. They've rendered the image. Look, they've changed the colors on the guitars and things. So this gets into a copyright infringement situation, which if I had to spend the money, I might not actually be able to win. Now this particular company knows there's such a piece of that they have on their homepage, the copyright infringement disclaimer form. So a guy like myself who created the original can go and provide proof to show that I created the original and they'll just stop selling this, no big deal. So what I really wanna say is we're finishing out this video today before we bring back in the wash and dried samples and have a closer look at what really happens after they've been abused in those machines out in the garage is we can do fabulous things with digital printing, but do be careful. I know so many of us love to share our imagery on Instagram and Facebook and all of the social media out there. The image was stolen from the internet and somebody else is making money off of somebody else's hard work. And I don't appreciate that. And I'm sure all of you would agree with me for that reason. So when you're buying anything on the internet, and this just supports my bigger discussion about shop local, shop in person, go into those local quilt shops and buy the goods in person, touch them, feel them, rub on them because it's fabric, we love it. But if you're gonna shop online, make sure you know what you're buying into because the advertisement for this quilt didn't even look the same as the quilt they sent me and they promoted it as a handmade machine quilted and I won't even say the brand that they said that they used, but this is none of that, there is nothing as advertised. And if you even look at the stitching on here, it's just real generic machine stitching. I'm actually tempted to light this on fire because I believe it's mostly polyester. And that's the other thing we want to be careful of when we're talking about wet versus dry 
excuse me, wet versus digital printing is originally digital printing like our awesome minky fabrics were done on a polyester substrate or a polyester base. It was much easier to do the dye sublimation printing that way. So the fabrics I've been discussing all day are cotton prints, the cotton we want to use in our quilting and it's just a new technology for actually putting the images on that cotton fabric where this doesn't even feel like cotton and the only way for me to truly tell that is to take a match to this thing and see if it melts versus catches on fire. I'm not sure I should do that indoors. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that point. Oh, and that being said, let's get back out to the washer and dryer and see what happens in our final test on the wet versus digital printing after they've been quilted, after they've been washed and dried, and after I'm done ranting and raving about my little knockoff situation here, the point is be careful with the way you display your images out there and be careful with your purchasing habits online. Make sure you know what you're purchasing and make sure you're always getting what you want out there. Okay, let's get those wash and dry samples. I like a wash quilt. I've never really played with my own quilts in the washer and dryer. Okay, so as we're looking through, we're just looking real quick to see if there's been any weird, like, markings that's been done at the stitching. I'm just kind of wandering around with my eyes here, see what I can figure out. Of course, this would happen if you didn't bind a quilt, right, before you threw it in the washer or dryer. And I'm sure the dog or cat that will get to lay on these when they're done will certainly not be disappointed but I am not seeing anything that looks irregular on the digital print. Let's go ahead and compare it to our wet print here. Uh, the feel on the fabric is still exactly the same. The feel of the quilting is exactly the same. Um, if anything, I didn't quilt this one as much, but uh, Okay, so they still look basically the same, the wet versus the digital. So my conclusion today in our sewing science class is there really is no perfect fabric, which brings me to the bigger conclusion, which is there's no perfect quilt. But when you're putting all of your time and energy and your hard-earned money into picking your fabric choices and making these beautiful quilts, of course you want to look for the high quality fabrics that feel fantastic and look fantastic when you're purchasing them. And that's why I always say shop in a local quilt shop, do it in person so you can do it in person and get exactly what you're hunting for. The answer I provided to the person who asked me the question about what was I doing to educate all of us about digital printing, my first answer was, and I guess it's remaining today, as long as the fabric doesn't look any different or feel any different, it really shouldn't be any different. That person's concern was what would happen after we machine quilt with it. And after a lot of really close inspection, like I'm saying, both fabrics have a teeny little flaws every now and again, and they're really caused by a dull, poor needle and really fast machine quilting. So I guess I'm guilty as charged, but I certainly hope you learned something here. I will encourage you to get out there into a local quilt shop and look for the different fabrics out there and ask if you can't tell the difference. Hopefully you won't be able to see Ask your shops, hey, which can you show me an example of a digital print? Can you show me an example of a wet print? I'm really excited to follow along with technology and everything that's happening right here at Making It Fun. We'll see you next time. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another helping of fun.